People, today we're going to be doing a couple little crafts with the TDS Christmas decoupage papers. If you have not seen these papers, let me give you a little sneak peek right here. And you're going to actually see me doing a couple different decoupage pieces with these throughout my DIY Fridays because I have a lot of projects I actually really want to do with these papers. And I love how the prints came out. I have two different ideas for coasters. We're going to do two different sets of two. To seal over them so we don't see this pattern on the back, I'm going to just take some of this white chalk and cover over it to get us a nice base. And I'm going to do that off camera. People, I decided that the mat for me, it looks nice and everything, but I'm putting these on coasters and I'm going to finish these with the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. So I'm going to actually use this multi-surface satin to give me a little bit of a sheen and then the final result's going to be glossy anyway. So I'm just going to switch. I got like first layer here. We're going to pop this on. And this is the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. I do plan on actually using these coasters. So I want to make sure that if I want to wipe them off or they get coffee on them because I'm going to set them at my desk. This way I have something that's going to protect them. And feel free to just tear your design if you want to. If you don't want to use any water, I'm just happening to use water. So I make sure that I go around the other little designs and don't mess those up. And people, if you are new to me, hi. <laughs> I like to use a fan brush to apply things whenever I'm working with tissue paper or napkins. It's super thin and it actually gets in up against like how I'm folding here. It pushes in extremely well where you have that connection and allows you a really seamless application. It's just, I talk about this a lot in my decoupage videos for those of you that are just coming in and you're like, why is she using a fan brush? It's just a pepperant, pep it's a pepperant, <laughs> it's a peppermint. You guys do what you want. No, it's a preference. You guys can happily use whatever application, you know, method you want. I just really like using fan brush. Since I'm sealing over the coaster anyway, I'm not really worried about having extra anywhere. Now this one, I'm going to have to slant a smidge to make sure that this design is on here. It don't need to be perfect. I just want, all right, listen, we're just going to put it all over the whole thing. Okay. We're going to be rebels here. Mm, let's not cut our head off. There we go. And if you want to use some cling wrap to smooth this out, you go right ahead. I'm just using my finger and tapping and pulling and smooshing and it's going on here. No problem. That's another reason I love this tissue paper. It is so easy to work with. I also do not like, unless it's really tiny sections, I don't like putting anything on top of this right away. I like to let it dry and then come back and seal over it or like get the edges off that kind of popped out. So I'm going to just let this dry and let's move on to our next one. Here are the two little designs we're going to be using. Super cute. Now these are going to be a little oversized. What is this? <laughs> They're going to be a little oversized for our piece and that's fine. We're just going to fit them on here however we can. Not a big deal. And um, if I, depending on what it looks like, I might go around the edges with some brown to blend out that white because I'm not so worried about the white necessarily blending in more so than I am the background of the design that we have here. So I'm going to just put the Mod Podge all over the whole piece and then just plop it down. Here goes our second one. And again, I'm just putting a thin layer of Mod Podge all over the whole towel, all the way to the ends. The cool thing about this is it's a small piece and the tissue paper is actually slightly forgiving. It's not like a napkin, so you can pull it up if you need to, where if you put the napkin down, that sucker is done. You are not pulling that up without issues. You feel me? All right. Oh, this is going to go 
this is gonna fit with the flower oh, I'm excited about this one I'm gonna let both of these dry just a little bit and then I'm gonna take some paint and touch up around the edges these ones are dry so we're going to touch these up and you can obviously you know get your edges off however you want these are just breaking it's not a big deal sand them if you want to sand them use your burn method if you want to use burn method but yeah and now I'm going to just take some Mod Podge. Actually, you know what? This is going to bother me because you can slightly, it's not real noticeable, but you can slightly see where the decoupage paper ends. So I'm going to take some of our multi surface satin and I'm going to just kind of blend in around the edges here so they look seamless. If you've never actually done this before, a good rule of thumb is to not just go in a swoop motion. You'll have a line and you'll still see a division. So you all unload and offload your brush just a little bit and then make sure that there's not a ton of paint. And since your background of your towel is white and we're using the same exact color and the background of our decoupage paper is also white, we can tap, tap, tap pulling the background into our decoupage paper. You can do this with a napkin as well or regular paper. I've done it with all of it and I've done it on furniture pieces too. Looks beautiful on furniture pieces, especially on like tabletops and stuff like that because then you really can't tell where one starts and one stops. But it's always good to blend the background color in so sometimes you want to have different colors in the background but the white makes it pop so when you get to the point where you're putting this around where your design is you want to make sure that the white is dominantly where the design is and as long as you're bringing the same color in it's hard to differentiate where your paper is and where the background stops so i'm just tappity tap tap tapping all along the edge this way we don't have a sharp edge with the paint and just popping it on here. I'm going to let this dry a couple minutes and then we will seal over these. I decided to do the same exact thing with these coasters right here and took some brown and a little bit of Waverly's antique wax and go around the edges. I absolutely love these coasters people. Let me know in the comments below if you plan on making coasters this holiday season. I waited until the next day to film like me sitting here so this way this did dry overnight and I just made this coffee right before I sat down to start filming this so it is fairly warm in case anyone is wondering how this is holding up but so you feel fuzzy inside and I feel fuzzy inside you know I would definitely recommend letting this cure <laughs> a couple weeks but, um, you know, for today, I thought it would be cute to have a little coffee mug sitting on there. And it's not hot or anything, and it doesn't feel like it's sticking. So I'm pretty happy with it 24 hours in. I picked this little piece up at Target, I think, last Christmas. Yep, it was $3. I just thought it was super cute. I didn't know what to do with it at the time, but I figured something would come to me. And one of these designs fits absolutely perfect in the back of this little window and keep in mind this is plastic so we are going to be decoupaging on plastic and using the design one here to layer as well i'm going to use two different patterns to create one design on the back of this decor piece oh, <laughs> It never works out the way you want it to. Come on. Got this plastic taking me out. This <laughs> shouldn't be so difficult. There are a couple of like scratches in here. I don't know what that is. It's kind of in there. I'm going to wipe this off with some water and see if I can't clean it a little bit better. I ended up just grabbing some alcohol. That did a good enough trick. It still didn't take that little smoosh out. I don't know what that is, but we're going to ignore it. Okay. We're going to pretend like it's not there in the beginning of the video. I actually did not show this paper. I don't know why I didn't, but we're going to be using this one up here in the corner for our background, but look how pretty this one is. This is probably one of my favorites on this print. 
so pretty. But I really like this one too. Oh, and I always oh, love that. Anyhow, <laughs> I am going to, you can use water. We're going to just tear this. I have different ideas for several of these. So even though I do this little um, series on the channel once a month, just dedicated to the TDS stuff, I am going to be popping some other projects in my Friday DIY videos for decoupage ideas because I have so many. <laughs> I have so many. And um, a lot of them are using Dollar Tree stuff. Some I have live edge pieces. Let me know if you would like me to do another video like this um, with more Christmas DIYs with the paper. So this way it's more dedicated to just this. Or if you're fine with me just popping it in Friday's content. Because I know I'm just putting three projects in this video and two of them happen to be coaster projects. But I just love the coaster ideas. I'm trying to ensure that I don't mess up the other designs next to this. So this way you get a really specific, you know, specific little tear. I'm just using a little bit of water on this brush because I think this piece right here is super cute with the happy holidays and we're going to try and pop that out through the window. Truth be told, I have not decoupaged with plastic a lot. In the past, my struggle has been <laughs> that you can kind of see some streaks in your piece with the material. It's not a perfect, I mean, Mod Podge, you can see streaks. I've had, you know, smart asses come in the video and be like, Mod Podge leaves streaks. Yeah, I know. That's why I say choose your mediums. Mod Podge is not for everyone, but I do like it. It's also accessible at Dollar Tree. And if you're a beginner, why would you want to spend expensive amounts of money on other mediums to start crafting with? That just makes no sense to me. Um, but I... 80% of the time use Mod Podge on my applications or the other one that I really like using is Deco Art Deco Podge in the mat. But today I'm just using this one. You can literally grab this from Dollar Tree, my friends. First, I think I'm going to just kind of center our little picture and see where we want it. And I really would like to kind of get as much in there as we can of the little boy, the little girl. Have the happy holidays. Oh y'all, I might, I might tear this. I think I'm going to tear it so I can get the happy holidays in there more. Oh y'all want to hear a funny story because you know I like telling stories and these and y'all are here to chat and craft with me. So recently in my comments because I also think this is going to be where I'm going to hash out <laughs> some of these wonderful comments that I get. I, in a video like this, I had a wonderful woman, um, or man, I'm not sure. I had a wonderful human being, wonderful person say that, um, you know, <laughs> they did not care to watch somebody that was disorganized. And I thought it was funny because I didn't know where I just put this and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to get another comment about how I'm disorganized. You know what? If y'all are crafters and you can keep your life together where you put every little thing, you are winning <laughs> because I struggle with it. I'll be honest with you. And not just because I'm messy. It's because I have so much going on. And if in a day I get five minutes to myself to really sit down, stare at the ceiling, take a breath, I am lucky. So if I'm like, I'll figure out where it went later and that makes you not want to watch me and hang out with me. Don't let the subscribe button hit you on the way out. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> now I think that fits in there a little bit better. What do you guys think? I just discovered that we can scrape a little bit of this off. I don't want to get too wild with it, but I would, I do. I don't know why this is bothering me. <laughs> I don't know why it's bothering me. I ended up using a little clay tool. And I got more of it off. Let's see if I just 
I don't know why this is bothering me. I should just leave it alone. I might have got carried away and put scratches in a plastic. <laughs> Who's gonna know? Just me. It's just for me anyway. But lucky for me, scraping this off, it kind of just blends in there so it doesn't look too bad. Okay, so we're in there. Oh, it's almost in there. Okay, all right. Let's <laughs> let's start my budget. I lied. Look, <laughs> I got it. Sorry, you guys are probably so done with me, like Brandy. <laughs> I'm pressing it in place so this way it does not move, and then I'm going to just plop a little bit on here. And normally, which you're gonna see, I'm gonna actually put the Mod Podge on the other piece. Ah! I got to put the Mod Podge on here. Please don't move. Work very hard at getting that snow out of the way. Okay. Um, it's a good idea when you're doing stuff on the front to just kind of put, especially because this isn't a napkin, so you can apply your medium to the front of this. So this way you don't get stuff all over the place. But it's not going to be too much of a big deal because we are putting another another design on here. For this one, I'm just going to take our Mod Podge and put it all on the front here, and then we're going to just plop it where we went on the glass. I said glass, didn't I? I meant plastic. <laughs> Make sure you have a different, the different, a decent level of, um, or amount. I don't know what I'm talking about today, people. Just stick some Mod Podge on there <laughs> and stick it to your plastic. Now you can do one of two things. You can either paint over the back to bring this design out and you need to be mindful because this is white and usually you're going to paint over it with a white and I don't want my snow to blend in. So I'm not worrying about painting over anything right this second because as you go to layer you don't want this to show through so i'm going to manipulate our paper and tear it specifically in sections that is going to fit around this if you don't want to waste your time doing that take the white paint paint over this once it's dry don't do a wild sweat don't get wild okay wait until this is dry take your white paint go right over it, and then you could just slap a whole design on the back of there and move on if you want to. I'm not going to do that. I want to actually tear mine out and have mine kind of go around. I got my little sections all torn out here. So I'm just going to plop these over here and I'm going to make sure that my ends are sealed down. And then we're going to put a little bit of distressing right around the edges. And just to add a tiny bit of distressing. Now if this was you know, would, I would go about this differently. I'm going to take a little bit of paint and that is more doo-doo brown than it is a distressing brown. Ugh. Maybe we add a little bit of red to that. I don't know people, I'm a little worried this is, all right, we're, you know what, I'm just doing it, whatever. <laughs> we gonna do it. And just go and tap around here. Tap, 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 tap. Now I'm just going to take the Mod Podge, put some on here, and we are going... I done lost the... <laughs> I was just using the fan brush. I put it in my little paint cup holder. That's what happens when I try to get organized. Then I don't realize where I'm hiding my own stuff from. Got people over here making me feel guilty about being Oh, the world of social media. You got to love it. Now, the cool thing about this, because we did not paint the back of this. See how you can really see the edge right there? Watch this, because we can have that dark, you know, the dark color. I'm just going to tap in around here and look what it's doing. It's putting that pigment behind our paper. And now it's giving us the illusion that the paper's are more blended together with that vintage overlay 
and you don't have the separation so much anymore. It looks blended like one piece. had to redo that one again I would probably do a dimmer red I feel like around the edges it was a little bit more popish <laughs> popped out a little bit more than I would have liked it to for our last one I just love this little piece and it's got like the cracked background I thought it would look really nice on a little glass piece and yes I definitely um I had different ideas this has kind of been laying in my stash so <laughs> I prepped it and now we're gonna decoupage it. Now this is not wide enough to go across the whole piece. So we got some space going on here. So what I'm gonna do is take this bottom here and cut it off and we will, you know, decoupage it to the underneath and then use the extra on the back. So this way you can't tell. Just kind of lining this up so we can cut right at the bottom. And then we'll have that extra. I want to try and leave this all in one piece. So I'm just marking this to know how big our gap is here that we need to fill in. And I want to do this first. So this way the edges of this are completely surrounded with the solid piece. So it looks more unison as we're going through. So I'm just going to pop some decoupage here, some medium. But first I want to measure and then cut our little sections. Put a nice healthy layer of Mod Podge on here and I'm just going to spritz it with a little bit of water. This is just going to help us kind of mold this down better. And gently press on our paper. And I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. Spray a little bit of water and just smooth that one out there we go so even though it's you know I cut it hopefully once I put our piece around the edge this is fairly seamless I was hoping since we had like the cracks in the paper itself it looked pretty authentic so we'll see Got our Mod Podge right here, and now I'm going to try and match up our flower. Or do I want to do it like this? It's not horrible. It's not horrible. All right, spray a little bit of wah wah, a little bit of wah wah, and then we are going to gently. I don't like how that's laying. And if you're ginger with it, you can pull it back off and place it down. So please keep that in mind. That is another reason I love this tissue paper so much. And I'm gonna continue gently doing this. And people, I want to pause real quick for a moment of talent and share Crafty at Kathy's latest creations with the Beauty and the Horror decoupage paper. These came out absolutely gorgeous. If you are making projects with TDS decoupage paper, send them on over to me on Instagram, send them in an email, and I will happily share them in another moment of talent next month.
And people, you can do this however you want. If you want to cut your ends off, I'm just going around the top and putting a little bit, sorry, <laughs> the camera. I'm just going around the top and putting a little bit of Mod Podge so I can just peel this right on over. And then you can go right on over it. It's just a tiny of that. We do have a couple spots that I noticed came through with us, you know, the cylinder aspect down the bottom here since we were turning. So I'm just going to take a little bit of brown paint and you can do this however you want. It's also just going to tie in since we have, you know, some spacing here. I'm going to take a little bit of brown paint. I'm just going to tap it, tap, tap, tap and plop this in these sections and then you're not going to know where there's holes at or you're just adding some colors you can use this as an opportunity to add the stressing in too if you want in different sections so this way you can't tell that there's even you know a different color paint on here if you don't want to use the brown just add some distressing i'm taking just a little bit of the antique waverly wax on my finger and just going around the top and then i'm just pulling it back I really love how the last one turned out. I definitely think I want to be using this paper on more glass pieces. I just want to point out, like, see how she's sometimes in the frame <laughs> and sometimes she's not. As I've started filming myself a little bit more, she is so fussy. So you might see her one second and then the next second she's not there. She's literally throwing a fit, like, from one spot to the next and huffing the whole time because I'm not paying her any attention. <laughs> okay, well, that's going to be it for today with our little chatting and crafting series. I hope you guys enjoyed these decoupage DIYs and until next time.